Let's go. I know, I know, I know, I know. It didn't hurt though. <laughs> you did good. Ooh, wow. That's interesting. Come down on your elbows and then no, you don't have to use a... <sighs> Not warmed up. Oh, you can't do... Oh, I was gonna say you can't do... <sighs> I feel my back is uneven, uh -huh. so I feel... Stand up for me if you want. Alright. What are you feeling right now? I have constant pain, been having it for years, Be, like underneath my shoulder oh, blade. Around the border here, the scapula? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like mixed, it, it, it gives me some frustration, let's say like for example I do like a yoga class or certain stretches, I have a feeling that I could pop it myself and gotcha. the pop would release it all of a sudden but right. that never happens i got you um and then so this basically my my main thing okay. and in the last few i want to say like seven months or a little more than that um i've been able to just like by squeezing my sugar blades pop some of that it, myself it, yeah. that fluid in there which has never yeah. happened before okay. so you know before it was just pain and now it's like you know, almost like it's almost too easy to pop it. Right. I feel like, and then um, I feel also some this high discomfort in my in my neck. Okay. Mostly on this side, so okay. I feel like if it, if I twist my head this way, it pops. I can target something and it pops. I got you. But if I do it the other way, it does not pop. Right. Um, and if I do a stretch or try to pop it myself, right. sometimes yes, I've been having like. Actual pain for a few days, right. almost like. Mm -hmm. So we gotta be careful with popping our own spine. Right. What, what happens is your spine just wants to move where you're loosest. So when you tilt your head side to side, what I find typically happens is the lower neck is the loosest part of the spine, and when we're tilting, we're just continuing to loosen what's already loose. The joints in your lower neck, when they're inflamed, will it bring pain, or we call referral pain, to the border of the scapula. So there's a couple things going on in this region that. I'll give you an explanation of why that's hurting. It's one, the lower neck joints refer pain to that area, and two, the alignment of your shoulders, part of what's going on is that your body wants to be sort of here. More like sense. a slouchy position. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, just in, because of life has just taken us... Well, to this we don't, point. Mm -hmm. Right, well, yeah. we don't, nobody really arches us back ever, and so we slowly kind of become more routine to being stuck forward. This position, especially if the head is forward, increases the stress on your lower neck and when there's more stress on your lower neck you'll want to kind of pop it to alleviate that pressure so the joint is like we call it a synovial joint capsule and the capsule is under pressure and so as it swells you go oh i just want to i need to release that pressure in there it's kind of like an itch and mm -hmm. so the way i think about it and how i how i fix this is by taking that pressure and moving it somewhere else you won't feel the need to pop it you won't feel that urge because your whole spine's going to be working evenly. You're only feeling that desire because your lower neck has done or is doing too much work based on the alignment and mobility. And so what I try to do is by adjusting your upper neck, adjusting your upper back, we're going to transfer some of that stress away from your lower neck. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And that'll give a little bit of a, a break to your lower neck. And that should alleviate that what we call referral pain, mm -hmm. which is down here. The rib attaches to these sides of the transverse process here. And so you have two joints really. You have a joint between each vertebrae, mm -hmm, and then right. you have a joint where the rib attaches to the side here. It would be right here on the side. And so there's a knuckle there. And that's what you're, when you're bending forward, that rib sort of opens up, and that makes that capsule right here swell. And that's what. That's the big wanna, discomfort. Yeah, you're wanting, you're wanting to relieve it, and then maybe it clicks and you release some of the air. So inside that capsule, there'll be air bubbles there'll be fluid, and so by compressing it, you release some of the air, which is occupying that space in there, and that's what gives you some temporary relief, and then 15 minutes later, it comes back because the position is incorrect, and then you just, oh, now I have to pop it again. Yeah, and it's like, uh, it, it does not end it's almost. An itch. Mm -hmm. It's an itch that never stops, and so the alignment has to be changed. We have to not have the rib want to be so far separated from the transverse because of the position of your mm -hmm. torso. It's mostly one knee, it's mostly this one. Show me one finger but, as best you can. Well, basically I just, my knee's really... Oh boy, yep. yeah. Yeah, I yep. don't know what happened. Yep. It's just nothing it's sudden. In, in here? Yeah, it's literally my kneecap and it's just... Yeah. Okay. Every time I bend and, and extend. So, you know, it, it's not like a pain that I cannot exercise. Okay, like I, I'm fine, but 
it does annoy me and, and you know lunges are not the best thing to do for me yep. so very like i have to be very careful about certain things we'll work on it a little bit yep it's there's a piece of cartilage in there that's non-sensitive, and the job of that cartilage, called the meniscus, is to prevent the two bones from mm -hmm. contacting. That crunching you're hearing is inflammation in that meniscus. Over time, that will cause the meniscus to age at a faster rate, and that's what we don't want, and that's what leads to knee surgeries and cortisone shots. And so. Yeah, this is what, you know, like they said, like, okay, you're young now, like if you can bear it, it's fine, but like, well, you know, later on, if it's gonna be needed, cortisone shots let's and blah, try blah, blah, blah. Let's try, let's try to, to avoid it. Let's try to avoid that. Mm -hmm. On your back for me. Okay. Yep. Take a deep breath in for me. Yes, exhale, let all the air out. There you go, you're doing great. Here we go. Yeah, a little tight, here we go. Exhale, there we go, exhale. Head back for me. Here we go, deep breath in. And then exhale. That's a lot. Yeah. Exhale. Chin down. All right, we'll get it. We'll get it. Yeah. Deep breath in. Exhale. Other side for me. Good. Deep breath in. And then exhale. Let it all go. Exhale. Let's go face up for me. Face up. There we go. Okay. Yeah, everything's sort of pushed. Like this right here, this is the side of the, what we call the axis bone. Mm -hmm. The alignment is the ballet alignment. <laughs> you understand? This, these you are can all feel pushed. It, right? Well, they're all pushed out. It mm -hmm. can feel like there's no curve in the neck based on how far these bones are, what we call posterior or backwards. Um, we have to try to bring these bones more in. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So everything I'm about to do is to try to adjust and soften your neck to make your neck more used to being in an arch position. Mm. There we go. Yeah, I already feel yeah. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's, how, you said how many years have you done ballet? Uh, sorry, when I was like eight and a half. Gotcha. And I'm now 24, I don't know. How many years is that? I got you. I got you. <laughs> yeah. I got you left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got you right there. Keep that chin up for me. Let this go. There you go. I know. I know, I know. It didn't hurt though. <laughs> yeah, you did good. I know, I'm a little quick on you. There we go. All right, same thing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let this side. There you go. Beautiful. All right, you did good. How'd that feel? You okay? Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's gonna be. I'm feeling more on the left side a little bit. Yeah, this side was a little. Not pain, but just. Yeah. Just yeah. a little crunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not used to moving the way. It's like a. Like a bar, I'm asking the vertebrae to function at a higher level. It's like jump across this bar and the vertebrae are used to just taking it easy every day and then all of a sudden they came into a stress test. And, you know, you have all of that. Do you have any sinus issues or ear issues at all? Do you ever have any? Not good? really. Okay. I only ask because the, the lymphatics that drain the ears and nose drain down your neck. And so sometimes when the neck gets all tight, that drainage gets affected and I think some people are born with larger lymphatic tubes, so it doesn't necessarily cause any problems, even if you have tightness up here. And then people like me, if I have a little bit of tightness up here, does that make sense? I get you know, sinus issues, ear That's issues. True. They get clogged more easily. And Maybe my ears get clogged coming down a little bit, no. but not, nothing major. You would notice, yeah, you'd mm -hmm. notice. It'd be like more just pressure in your ear, pressure in your sinuses. No, then you know. not really. Good, 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 good. The left side, yeah, this this side. Right? It's like not the other side is looser, <laughs> but this one is the tight one probably. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Your neck likes to tilt to the right a lot more than mm -hmm. it likes to tilt to the left. Sometimes it might be a, a right you like to sleep on your right side, you might not like to sleep on this left side. Your neck kinda likes to rotate and tilt to the right. It's like a car, it likes to drift to the right more than it's drifting to the left. Let me show you, this is where your neck belongs, is back here. Like I showed you on the x-ray, this is where we, we, this is the cervical supported area. This is mm -hmm. where we, we know this position will last longer. And so everything I do is sort of aimed to get your neck soft so that we can remold your neck into this alignment. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. This is what's gonna make it to 100. <laughs> you know, it's gonna last a lot longer. You know, the lady I showed you on the x-ray you know, she's 55 and her lower neck looks like 100, right? So her spine has aged, does that make sense, a lot faster yeah. in certain areas 
and then not at all. There we go. It's already starting to feel like better, mm -hmm. kind of like you're able to get like deeper mm -hmm. without me hurting, you know? Yep, 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 it'll get, keep moving the fence, keep moving this. There we go. All right, take a break, we'll go to the other side. Yeah, I feel that one. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when there's a lot of lactic acid trapped in an area, it makes a little bit of a mark. The mark is never normal. It, I'm not even putting that much pressure on your neck and just even light pressure with this instrument. Sometimes real quick, there's already a mark forming oh, wow. right up here, even just from a few. This is what I've saw, uh, I've seen from the videos and it like looks really scary. I know, yeah. But for now it's not hurting. So just, I'm going real gentle. It's just, there shouldn't be any Mark. Yeah, you're not hurting me. Yeah, just pretty soft and the area from it being tight, it cuts off its own circulation. That leads to soreness building up. That's what you feel is Ed, that's a little tender and, and as we work through this through a few visits, we'll be able to get to a point where Ed, you know, are you pushing with the same pressure that you did on the first visit because there's no longer any tenderness in here. It should just be, you know, walk in the park, just easy, no tenderness. Oh, it's more smooth now a little bit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but yeah, there's a little, I can feel, feel that, mm -hmm. a little crunchiness. It's like tangles in the hair, and we're trying to comb the muscle fibers, the ligament fibers in here, and eventually there won't be that click. It'll, it'll be, it'll get smaller and smaller, and then the adjustment gets easier and easier. But today I'm just sort of giving you a little preview, and that's where we're going, and I don't want to get to all your classmates, all your, all your students, all, <laughs> all. Surprise, what in the world happened to you? What happened? <laughs> what happened, Sarah? All right, there we go. So here's home. There we go. There you go, move a little bit. Oh, no, this is yeah. This is that. So when we bring our head back, do you see how I want it happening from your upper neck? I don't mm -hmm. want your lower neck doing it. That's what you, when you showed me earlier, were you tilting your head back? And it was in the back. It was probably like just it was happening like in the, the lower part. Right. right, and that's why it's pinching down there. And so. It's not under conscious control where you're bending your neck. It just bends where it's the loosest. And so because your upper neck is mechanically tight and stiff, we have to manually sort of get that bolt turning, get that joint moving like a knuckle, you know, and once it starts to move e easily, it won't, it'll just move easily for you and then you can just live your life and have a good time. And, and then at the end of your day, like I said earlier, you have to brush your teeth. You have to do things to keep your alignment in the right position. Yes. Like we... You know, like I said, you eat food and then you brush your teeth. You don't eat food and go to bed. You know, it's like, or, or how about this? You don't brush your teeth and eat food and go to bed. So, and then complain to your dental hygienist, well, I brush my teeth every day. And you're like, well, what are you doing right after you brush your teeth? Oh, I have chocolate cake and I have candy and I leave it all over my teeth. Well, that negates the whole brushing of your teeth then. You have to brush and then go to sleep. So we, the same way with the spine, you want to do things to put your alignment in the right position and then go to bed. Does that make sense? You don't want to do yes. the neck stretch and then go sit in a lazy boy chair and then go to bed. You want to put your spine in the best alignment possible, and then go to sleep. Um, very good. Yeah, those are really good analogies. Yeah, you're doing good, doing good. We're gonna get these, so we'll get the upper back moving. Yeah, down here, we're gonna have some fun on that upper back, but I got you real gentle. I'm just gonna go a little, I'm a greedy chiropractor. Here we go, just this side, there we go. There it is, yeah, I know, a little deeper. It wasn't even that loud, it's because we're just moving that same bone a little deeper. All right, it's okay. That left side was what needed it. Uh, the right side of your back is higher than the left. Yeah. Um, Even when I'm driving, yes. I can feel how my right shoulder yes. is more forward. Yes. Um, let me see here. Yes, yeah, because of your head being tilted. Essentially, your head's tilted to the right. That's what's causing that left side to be all out of alignment. Your head likes to tilt right, and then because the head's tilted to the right, the right shoulder's all lifted. It's really that neck alignment that's causing the torso alignment, sort of a, a domino effect. And so these ribs here are under a lot of stress. They're more expanded. You're going to have more, there's going to be more swelling of the joints on the right side because of that asymmetry. I and see. so the alignment is putting extra stress on these knuckles. It's it, it begins with sort of getting your head to tilt to the left as easily as it tilts to the right. And it's just you know, it comes from injuries and alignment and years of 
sitting in school or you know it's, it's, it's a multivariable equation that sets this up so we're going to compress I'm going to adjust you again at the end try to loosen up these muscles here a little bit loosen up the joints and then we'll try to do a little bit of a deeper adjustment on these mm -hmm. there we go yeah I use the soft nice. yeah I use the soft tissue work as a way to get a better adjustment when the bones don't move the way they're supposed to sometimes you just give up and then I'll see you next time it's like no how about we rub the area loosen the areas that makes sense and then try it again yeah it really does make sense so we mm -hmm. can get this done in a more reasonable amount of time and get you to the stretching which is what's going to be kind of like the toothbrush that the dental hygienist uses to allow you to participate in the care of your body mm -hmm. in, a, in a safe way uh, and so that you're not just aggravating the loose areas but yeah we're going to push that yeah this upper back right there yeah feel that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you mentioned lifting earlier, that rigidity and tightness right here is what leads me to think that your lower back is going to overwork when I you see. bend. That makes a lot of sense because I'm trying so much not to, you know, like if I'm working on my glutes, I'm trying so hard not to um, work on my lower back and isolate, mm -hmm. but it's almost mm -hmm. impossible. Yeah. Right. You just have to have your middle back participate. Right. Yeah. Mechanically, if this part of your back's participating, it's less likely to, to over upset your lower back and it's not under conscious control. You don't get to de like decide you know okay middle back move it's not that easy it's not that simple it either functions or it doesn't here we go a little deeper very good okay right. mostly like not work out for a few days or it just doesn't matter because you're actually you're actually in better position to work out after like right now after the visit you understand because you have your whole spine working okay i see mm -hmm. um I thought it was because like you're like really softened up and you're like, you know. You're, see, how about this? The worst thing to do after a visit would be to sit for a long time because uh, after I've loosened up the clay, we can use that loosening to make your alignment better or you can make your alignment worse, right? If I heat up all the spine and make the clay soft and then you go sit in a chair, does that make sense? I yeah. just, I've mm -hmm. just enabled you to make your posture worse. I see. You see, mm -hmm. so the there's whole, no risk. In that. Well, the, ri the, the idea for me at least, mm -hmm. the idea would be to adjust you, massage you, and then counter stretch you, and we'll do a little bit at the end, Got it. so that we lock in a new position, and not just. So it, it disheartens me sometimes if we just do adjustments, or somebody goes and gets a deep tissue massage, but then they don't do anything to allow their spine to harden in the right position. The massage, how scary is this? Can be might make your alignment worse. Right there. Yeah, this one hurts a lot. Mm. Right there, here it is, here we go. Wow, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's a little sore, I feel it. I know I need it, it's okay. All right, here we go. Some of it's like years of having to tell your body to be quiet. So you, yes. when you're doing a move and your back might start to hurt and you have to say, be quiet body and... I can tell you for sure that this is a mistake that many dancers make. Mm -hmm. And you have to, to push just through. Kinda, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Push through and not seek for actual mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. professional help, you know? Right. And then everything just, it never goes away. It just yep. gets buried. It's starting to feel better. Mm -hmm. If 
he was crunchy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wow. Mm-hmm. 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 I felt the thing went into my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right there. Pretty gentle again, just almost oh, the I weight see. of the tool, mm -hmm. and just yeah, was that the previous tool something like a ball? Or it's like kind a of just a this one is the scraping one, right? Yeah, this is a scraping tool to help increase circulation, help bring blood in. These areas get so tight that they get sequestered off and isolated and sort yeah. of wrapped up, and we have to unwrap them, get some blood in here to rinse out the tissue. It doesn't hurt. As mm -hmm. much as it looks mm -hmm. on video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you doing to that poor girl? <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. Right there. There you go. Right there. That's where the ribs attach. Right on the side. Right mm -hmm. there. That's what we're trying to clean out those joints. There we go. And then trying to loosen up your middle back here. The middle, middle back being tight is what's trapped this lactic acid in your middle back. Mm -hmm. That's what allows you to overwork your lower back when you're doing any type of maneuvers at the, at the gym where your lower back's being asked to do too much. So, yeah. Try to loosen up this area. It actually feels good. You're doing great. You're doing great. Yeah, you're doing an area gets so tight and uh, sequestered off. It's like the body isn't. There's no attention drawn to it. So what we're trying to do is draw attention to these areas to get your body to replace. So the word healing is a misnomer. Our body just replaces, and so by stimulating blood flow, we expedite that replacement. So anything that's in here that's uh, dirty or lactic acid or inflammation in the joints now gets it's like it gets put to the front of the queue, and your body starts to address what's in there. There we go. Yeah, the right side, a little bit more of a mark came out on the right. So the side that's loose will actually have a less of a mark because it's actually moving. The side uh -huh. that's, that's stiff will have a larger mark because of the internal tightness on the right. There'll be a larger mark. The side that's moving actually cleans itself out. And you can sort of see that on her back here. I've sort of combed both sides pretty evenly and the, and the right definitely has a more that's that's kind of what I expected. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has a bigger mark on it. <laughs> that's almost ticklish. Oh, 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 because no, no. it's like close to the ribs and the no. side. No, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you anything. <laughs> wow. Also feeling the lower back when yeah. you go down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's the lower back. What happens is your lower back is so willing to, to move, mm -hmm. and I don't. But that may, that's maybe just soreness. I don't even know. Right. Well, it's, it's inflamed, and then the joint moves and starts to tell you how. You know, the, the joints are loaded with sensors. There's position sensors in the joints, and it tells where we are in space. And when I move your middle back, your lower back can move in conjunction. It's not supposed to. But that tells me how loose your lower back is. That even when I press, you know, here, you mm -hmm. can feel it in your lower back. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so we're trying to redistribute some of the stress. But if you can sort of you see that, Carlin, see the left, the left side. Her left side is. Can you feel the difference? Right, feel this is like low, and then on yeah. this whole right side. Right there. Yeah. Still, it feels more stiff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. 
like this is all built up right here mm -hmm. and then this is more flush on the mm -hmm. left I can feel that yeah yeah so the first goal of care is to sort of level everything out to like rolling dough <laughs> I want the <laughs> dough to be level and then we can that's when it starts to at least move more in a more balanced fashion and then we can start molding it so that it stays level I know. I know. Yeah. Is this just your hands? Yes, yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah, then that's how stiff it is because I feel like it, yeah. like it yeah. almost feels like a. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so again, it's the right side doesn't feel it's way tighter. This side's actually a lot looser over here. This would probably be the side that hurts. Typically, the side that's all stiff, you know, doesn't we don't feel the side that's stiff until I touch it, and then you go, Wow, I bet mm -hmm. hurts more on the right when I touch it, but then the left side hurts when you're not in my office because this is the side that you're depending on to do everything. There we go. Exhale. There we go. There we go. There we go. I got you. Here we go. I know it's tough. This is a tough one. There we go. I know. Oh boy. I saw yeah, one. We got a couple more to do. Here we go. I know. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Exhale. Sorry. Good. Very good. I know. Good, I know, you okay? Here we go, a couple more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, you did great, we're done, we're almost done, okay. So, <laughs> oh boy, yeah. yeah, it'll all just move on the first adjustment. You'll mm -hmm. find it, and then it won't be sore, and there's no apprehension. <laughs> yeah, that's the joint right there. Yeah. This is like ticklish for soreness, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Loosen up this SI joint right there. That's the joint. There shouldn't be any soreness in there. And typically sitting locks that joint, you know, and so our school years, this we, we grow sitting, and so this joint gets stiffer and stiffer. And that's why in your 20s sort of everybody starts getting more lower back issues because everything's starting to harden as we get to full skeletal maturity. Mm -hmm. And then we're in the wrong alignment. And our world, you know, chiropractically, pediatrically, nobody's analyzing posture to the degree that we are here, and so now we're having these stress points. All right, doing great, doing great. I got you. There we go. Yeah, the ones are fine. Okay, I'm just feeling. There we go, a little tight. Yeah, I can. It, these almost no <laughs> no mobility. Wow. So. There we go. Whoa. All right. Let me feel. Hold on. Okay. Wow. Okay. So when there's too much weight on your toes, the tarsal metatarsal joint gets jammed all the time. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? So what are you checking? Why are you pulling toes on? What are you, what are you trying to do there, Dr. Ed? I'm looking for there to be some mobility. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. There's a joint between two bones here, and it shouldn't feel like concrete. <laughs> if, right. you're, if all the pressure's on the wrong position, your weight's supposed to be on your heel, but because of ballet, maybe we have too much weight on our toes. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So these joints have all fortified and gotten stiffer. And that's fine and dandy until you start wearing out the metatarsal joint here, get bunions, plantar fasciitis, shin splints, yes. right? So we count you know, heel spurs. All those things happen because we have too much weight on the toes. And there's just How no... interesting. Yeah, yeah I can just, see it. There's that's no, just jam. Yeah, there's no pull. It's... <laughs> They're at no mobility between your 
Well, what's interesting okay. is like by pulling the toes and kind of curling them under yes. towards the floor, like in the correct position. Yes. The they pop by themselves, um, just with you know a little right. bit of pressure towards the ground. Yes. To to get your feet warmed up for ballet, but I can check it, we it. don't really pull them. Well, I've a little bit moved it. I got a little bit out of that one. There we go. Wow. Okay. The amount of strength that you have in your toes here is surprising me. <laughs> there it is. Okay. There we go. And okay, you know what? I can never reach the floor with my pinkies. It's interesting. Well, that's, that's why. That's you see, why. You see how that one's normal? Do <laughs> you notice how that I barely touch this guy? Right. Yeah. Moved beautifully. <laughs> this guy, these are almost too normal. It's funny. And then these three here are just absolute solid concrete. Yeah, they get all the weight. Like the big toe, second toe, third toe, you know? There is. I got your leg. I got you. There's just nothing. It's Again, nobody cares until you wear it all out, and then every, all of a sudden we have a disease, and it's like, no, it's not. This was growing for years, and both both knees you're feeling? Yes. They're both, like, just crunchy. I don't even know. Hike that up as high and as you again, can. Like I've done, hike, I've, hike, hike that up your pant leg for me. And again, I've done, like, um, both x-rays and MRIs twice, because I was like, you know, let's get it checked by, like, different doctors. Let's see, like, different opinions. And... Both times it was it was like oh like I mean we can't see anything it looks fine like it looks like nothing is up with it you know mm -hmm. and I was like yeah but I still have pain and it started like three years ago mm -hmm. so you know just see if there's any adhesions underneath the patella here moving it around is sort of the patella is gliding nice and smooth so I don't there's inflammation underneath the patella does that make sense but the yeah. patella feels great there's no crunchiness around the patella but underneath the patella is the meniscus and the joint and so when you're moving you're bending the inflammation underneath the patella sort of moves over that mm -hmm. that's what you're feeling is that crunching and yeah it's oh. not like a crazy pain now it was it was painful earlier like you know I, honestly like i was really overtraining. yes uh when this whole thing started yes and i was like dancing many many hours a day and riding my bike two hours and a half every day to go to the studio and back. Yes. And I feel like, I almost feel like the biking made it worse. And one day I was doing a lot of stairs. Yes. Very fast. And that same night, uh, my knees started being swollen. Mm -hmm. And that's that's when my pain began. So nothing, mm -hmm. like no accident, no like no major movement. How much biking nothing. were you doing? Like. Per hours per week, average, you think? Um, you had the average. Much time on a bike per week? Yes, ma'am. Over ten hours. Okay. Like so, m mountain bike, kind of cruiser bike. What kind of bike was this? It was like a, it was like a mountain bike, but in the city. Okay. Like on flat. One one thing to check, and I, I'm not a pro biker, but I've pretty well in terms of the mechanics. When you're bicycling, see if you're bicycling like this, and your leg never goes to completely straight. Oh, I was, I was, good. I had my seat as up as I could. And your, and your yeah. straight. Okay, good. All right, well. That at least, uh, yeah, at least I was aware of that. Good, okay. Because that, if, you, if yeah, you're, this if you're, kind of hurts. Yeah, if you were, if you were biking with your knee not going to full extension, mm -hmm. you know, straightening out, but there's, what I find is that these muscles in the quad, especially vastus medialis here, the inside of your quad muscle, mm -hmm. the tighter this muscle is, the more it vice grips the knee. So releasing and stretching tightness in the quad unbinds the meniscus and allows it to breathe a little better and then when you're moving it's not so gripped together so that it can move without having to grind in here and interesting yeah but there's so she there's, said that there was nothing on mri or X clean it was turned clean. out clean right right so it's not well again I, this is what i said I mean, to you about it's hard to see sometimes this is what i said with you remember with the neck earlier i said the sensitivity at 24 see we can see broken down buildings but if the building's up and just a little moldy the image can't see it does that make sense it, it only shows yeah. when it's severely damaged when the meniscus is in a lot of trouble then you'll be able to visualize it but the meniscus didn't go from normal to in trouble over over a day that progression is hard to view on mri and it's just the best we have we don't have technology and i call these immeasurables if we if we can't measure it then it's left undefined and then not taken care of um, but there's obviously the symptom of I, I'm bending it at it and I feel that, that crunchiness in there. 
And that's yeah. not supposed to be. And so there's... it's not supposed to feel like that now. Correct. <laughs> no. There's yeah, evidence. Yeah, I feel that on the inner part. Yes, yep. right here. Yeah, this is the meniscus right in here. And there's fluid. Ooh, mm -hmm. There's fluid in here. Wow. And we want to work that out of there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, you gotta release. Warm my thighs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gotta stretch them more too. Right. Try to get your bottom to your heel and stretch those yeah. quads. And it's crazy because with like so much flexibility, it's ow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this is worse. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I feel it like almost like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Let's go to your happy place. <laughs> that looks a little that that's a little easier than the elbow for now. Mm -hmm. Ha! Here. For now. <laughs> uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm surprised, like. Mm -hmm. How much soreness is in your? Yeah, yeah I'm surprised. I feel. I felt like uh, it almost. It's worse than the back. Mm. Yeah, because in the back I was, right. you know, I was bearing this better right, than I am on my thigh. Mm -hmm. Right here. This is a message for dancers. Mm -hmm. Go see a, oh. a good chiropractor. You need it. Oh. I don't it's know how true. you guys do it. Yeah, I don't know how you guys do it without a mechanic. It's like you're, you're not, any athlete needs a car mechanic. If you're gonna do athletic things with your body, you need somebody checking you. Eventually, you're trying to sit down. Okay. Inside of the heel. So sometimes the first. Huh. I know, I'm sure this is too. This would be too trivial. Trivial probably. That you're trying to get your bottom. Go ahead and put your leg either leg either leg over here, on the table. So should it go, so like, go, like, go this like this way? Try it this way. I yeah, try it and then come down inside. You see, I don't feel any stretch. I feel it on my hip uh -huh. because I'm. I, if I if I tilt back, I can take my hip, my knee, closer to my chest, and that will like. But I cannot feel a thigh stretch. My thigh is actually like almost like right, relaxed. Right. Well, it's a good stretch for your meniscus. Yeah. Even if you're not feeling the muscle stretch, the meniscus is opened up right now. Right. Okay. So, so they're still doing some good it's in help here. Mm -hmm. Compress some of the fluid out mm -hmm. from the knee. Well, one stretch that I, that I do for nice. my thighs often is I bring my my foot to my um, seat. Yes. And then I bend the other leg. I slide this back, and tuck in the hips under, and kind of like just helps me really get this. Yes. Good. Or you That's know, the best on stretch. the on you know laying down, taking my feet in and trying to like push my hips down and lift a knee so yeah just you know come down inside of the heel inside keep the toes pointed there you go and then come down on your elbows and then oh you don't have to oh, not warmed up so yeah this one i feel like almost like on the outer part of my thighs I yeah. got work to do. Definitely, if I tuck my hips under, I feel <laughs> it more. So I, the more I flatten my back, right, the more I'll feel it here. Yeah, I feel it more like on the outer side. Good. Uh huh. I feel yeah, good. And then, yeah, there we go. Exactly. Now it's tighter. Now yeah. It's stretching and then trying to open that up and then try to get 20 minutes. The goal would be to. Ooh, okay. So just like really, sitting in here. If you can, and then yeah. Try to do it. Probably <laughs> probably work your way up to that. Try two minutes. See how you do. Mm -hmm. You know, three minutes, and then don't just try to go from zero to 20, but right, trying to get some real time invested in stretching that quad. And then, you know, mm -hmm. Epsom salt on your knee. Okay, good. You know, you can wrap the knee in Epsom salt or even icing it right where that crunching is. Get some ice on that, especially after a intense workout or ballet or something like that. You want to, should be. It's know, crazy. Normally, I would feel this more. I feel like. You know, because you, you gave me like a really deep yes. tissue massage, I'm more warm now. Right. And I am like, I, I'm still feeling the stretch, but if I yes. was doing it cold, for sure I would feel more. Okay. You know? Very good. Mm -hmm. You're good. Alright. Alright, go ahead and tilt your head to the left a little bit for me. Tilt your head left. 
Ooh, wow. That's interesting. <laughs> That's like a... You have a top part here, one second. Very, very weird. <laughs> but it's good. Yeah, I'm going to loosen up this side too. Tilt your head to the right a little bit for me. I felt that again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to pop bop you or... Uh-huh. There we go, good. What is, is this supposed to like release the tension? Just what are the... The channels behind the ear. So remember I was talking about those drain lines? Uh -huh. The drain lines that actually start at the bridge of the nose, so the lymphatic drainage of your sinuses and your ears all drain... In the back? Down the back. Yeah. So they come right through that area. And so if there's all this inflammation or tightness and, and ba anything bound up in there, it can affect that drain line. It feels and really good now. Like, <laughs> very relaxed. Like, my whole head feels, like, relaxed. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> and check your sh shoulder for a second. Press back with your elbow here, my elbow. Press back. I think it's all right. Yeah, you're good. So check it out. I thought this was going to make me, like, like I, I thought if one, this was going to really press, press pop. Press back here. Yeah, you're good. Let's go again. <laughs> I feel really good. So the goal is then... If you have a foam roller, mm -hmm. I do. You can uh, start I have one with the spikes. I, fine, I can have one with, without yeah, it too. That's fine. So the, the goal is at the end of the day mm -hmm. to arch our body back. Mm -hmm. You start up here. Again, I don't want you to bend too much in your lower neck. Okay. Get the idea. And you actually move it kind of right over that rib that's inflamed. And you would sometimes I, I even lift my bottom up a little uh -huh. bit to compress. Yeah, I, I do these exercises sometimes. Just it like feels really good. Push. And then you get even a pop and then good. And back from, from that. Mm -hmm. You try here. Put your bottom here. Mm -hmm. yeah. and then I you, fell another pop. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you lift your bottom up a little bit sometimes. There you go. And then try to push on that. And then, yep, good. And then roll back to where you came. And then you just yeah. push. I feel it more on my right side, just like I normally Correct. do. Correct. That's mm -hmm. the tighter side. Yeah. So what will happen is you'll feel like you're crooked on it, but it's because your back is unlevel. Does that make sense? Yeah. And as your spine levels out... Should I not put my head down? Eventually you want your head on the floor. Yeah. So you okay, can, so, so I can. Then you, and then you stay here for a minute. Don't. Then you move less. As you master the roller, you're staying in one position longer, so you try to place that right over that rib that's sore, and then So, for stretch. example, uh -huh, <laughs> if I try pushing my right shoulder down a little bit, Correct. I can feel it more on Correct. that side. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have to work into it. You have to try to go into Which, it. It's funny because I I already like when I roll my back. Yes. I do that regardless because it feels good. 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 Um, but now I know that it's also correct to do it, so that's you, great. You could even go onto your side a little bit. So. Mm -hmm. you just turn your head left a little bit. Say there, you're fine. What I'm saying is you could. Sometimes I'll I'll even just, you know, try to. Yeah, this is a little bit more painful. A little more painful mm -hmm. to go onto the side and mm -hmm. you just compress. On you go on your like lateral. Uh huh. And you just ah. You know, you try to work. Got it. And, but then, then stay on your back. But just, you could, you try to find the position and they, oh, right there. And try to hold and sink in and then stretch. It's more about the left side needing to stretch open okay. as much as it is the right side needing to compress. Does that make sense? It's this side being so tight that doesn't let you actually bend to the right as easily as you can bend left. So, it's, so maybe I can. So going on your right side. I already, oh, yeah. yeah. You're trying to I feel let on the this right, stretch. I actually feel it on the right side. Good. Because it's on the... Um, Correct. Yeah. And you try to stretch that right side, sorry, left side open. Sometimes, yeah, you pull. Pull, do lengthen. And lengthen this whole left side of your torso. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's... There you go. Good, yeah. yes. Oh. There you go. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's that's really good. I can do this like often. And then you stretch and then compress that. So at the end of the day, especially after a, a big, you know, yeah. performance, you get on that right side and compress that side. Now this is like okay, a, a one month prescription kind of idea because what will happen is I have people return after a few months and then it's all the opposite side. I'm like, what did I tell you? They're like, oh, I kept doing my right side, and then the left side's all popped out. So <laughs> it will change. Is what I'm trying to say. The more you do this your back will level out, and if you keep doing it, it'll then, you know, it was like this. Now it's I'm gonna like, go the other way. Now, yeah. now I'll be like, now I gotta do the other side. You know, so mm -hmm. try to, 
So it's good to probably like do both and just you'll, take care of both. Correct. Or... What will happen is you'll just be eventually you'll just be on your back. Right. As your back levels out. You don't need to go to the side. Uh huh. And maybe not even needing to press that right shoulder down to feel it right. or like to target it more. You, you won't know? feel it anymore. It'll okay. just go away. And then you start just spending more time in one spot and moving less. You just do 20 minutes. And you just put Let your legs on. fall on one side. Uh huh. Then you rotate. Uh huh. Kind of loosen everything up. And then the work I do on the table is to make this easier. So they'll both work in synchronicity. The adjustment makes the stretching easier. The more you stretch, the adjustment gets easier. And then we progress up that ladder of, Ed, you can do whatever you want to do. with It's, it's easy. Okay. All right, very good. That's okay. awesome. Yes. I can do this often, so mm, that's good. That's good stuff. All right, very good. Wow, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It was amazing. Oh, you did great. You did great. Thank you. Very good, very good.